Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Coldwater, where today on WOSN, we've got a very important Midwest Athletic Conference softball matchup for you between the number one ranked Minster Wildcats and the Coldwater Cavaliers. Minster 23 and a one on the season, 6 and 0. Oh. In the Midwest Athletic Conference, Coldwater 5 and 1 on the back and can stop Minster from grabbing the outright conference title today. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Mark Schott. It should be a good one here today, Mark. A beautiful day for softball. It really is. And, you know, we're looking at this Minster team that's 23 and 1, that single loss to Lincoln View, and obviously a non conference matchup. But Coldwater has one of the top pitchers in the area on the mound today, and that would be Madison Wendell, and we'll give you her numbers when she comes out to play defensively. But a really interesting matchup today, and it gets a Mr. team that's hit 26 home runs, averaging almost 10 runs a game. Yeah, when you very rarely in uh, TV do we have to tell you, Coldwater is in the orange jerseys with black <laughs> pants, the darker orange jerseys. Minster in the lighter orange jerseys and the black pants as Reese Albers will step into the batter's box to lead off today for the Minster Wildcats as Madison Wendell steps in to that circle, ready to deliver today's first pitch. It's dribbled back to second base as Libby Greeship will make the soft throw over to Rachel Troyer for the out. And quickly, Albers is retired on the first pitch she sees. Madison Wendell, 119 and two-thirds innings in the circle this year. She has struck out 206 batters in those 119 and two-thirds innings and walked just 11. Wendell, the Central Michigan commit, with the first pitch in for a strike to Ryland Trago, the center fielder for Minster, a 427 hitter on the season. The numbers for Minster's offense are just gaudy. That pitch inside nearly hit Trago. Minster has scored 10 or more six of their last eight times out. Yeah, That's what you want to see here yeah. as you start peeking towards the end of the season. Your team batting average is 368 on the season. And again, those 26 home runs, nine and a half runs per game, and that number has really come up, as Garrett said, here in the last month. And Wendell gets the signals from the cold water dugout. Cavaliers coached by Kyle Arns. The change up, Trey go out in front of it, fouls it back. Runs a count to one, two. Trago playing center field when the Wildcats are in the field. Madison Wendell's ERA 0 0.94. That's doing all right. It's Wendell. Swing and a miss from Trago. She'll go down swinging. The first strikeout tallied by Madison Wendell. Coldwater much more experienced in one run games this season. And Minster is. Cavaliers three and four in one run games. Minster has only played one game this season, and they're 23 and one, by the way. One one run game. And that was victory. It's the first pitch to the number three hitter, Addison Inskeep. Watched it go by for a ball. A cool 500 batting average and 10 of those 26 home runs on the season. Yeah, 47 RBIs for Addison Inskeep, the third baseman for the Wildcats. Power on power battle here as Wendell will get one back to the shortstop, throw across the diamond in time, and the Cavaliers have retired the Wildcats in order here in the top of the first. We'll go to the bottom half, still scoreless on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard here on WOSN. Bottom of the first inning, still scoreless between Coldwater and Minster as the Cavaliers set the Wildcats down in order at the top of the first. Looking at the Cavaliers lineup today, in the batter's box, Madison Wendell will lead off. Claire Steinke will bat second, and Rachel Schroyer will hit third here in this first inning. As the Minster Wildcats have Brooklyn Osterloh in the circle today. She'll wear number 13 for the Minster Wildcats. The Wildcats defensively look like this around the horn. Catching is Hannah Oldegas. First base is Michaela Hoskins. Second base, Haley Albers. Third base, Addison Inskeep. And shortstop is Reese Albers. The outfield from left to right is Alana Pranger, Ryland Trago, and Emma Lynn as Madison Wendell steps into the box. Seven home runs this season for the senior. She'll get the dirt in the box situated just the way she wants it. As Osterloh comes plateward 
for the strike on the first offering to Madison Wendell. Osterloh, 15 and 1 this season, 2.00 ERA, 108 innings, 108 strikeouts in 98 innings. She has walked just 12 on the season. The 0 1 swung on into right field, tracking it back off the glove of Emma Lynn. Wendell stops it second with the stand up double. Might have got hit by the throw coming in, but she'll stand on first base, or on second base, I beg your pardon, with that stand up double. Just about to say, Garrett, our game time temperature was 84 degrees. The wind is about 8 to 10 miles an hour, and it's blowing in the direction that carried that ball away from the right fielder, Emma Lynn. And that's, yeah, it's a tough ranging backwards that you get a hard read on it. Got some high skies here today in cold water facing. The south is Osterloh. Comes Platewood. That first pitch in for a strike to Claire Stunky catching today for Coldwater. Five home runs to her credit so far this season. 16 RBIs. A base knock could give her 17, six, or 17 here in the bottom of the first inning. Swing and a miss and a hardy cut from Stunky. Runs the count to 0-2. Once you get through the top three or four batters of the Cavalier batting lineup, the, the averages really drop, so it would be important to get Wendell in from second base. Cavaliers 5-1 in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Their lone loss to Parkway earlier this season, a 5-4 decision in extra innings. Change up into Steinke, missed just wide. And in that game, Parkway walked Madison Wendell and Claire Steinke a combined 10 times. Each got five free passes, basically daring somebody else in the lineup to beat them. And they couldn't. But the, the Cavaliers could rain on the Wildcats parade here today as a swing and a miss from Steinke. She'll go down swinging for the first out here at the bottom of the first. High pitch. One before that was that off-speed pitch on the outside part of the plate that was called a ball. Didn't come back with the rise ball. And blew him away. That brings Rachel Schroyer to the plate. 281 hitter. As Ma Madison Wendell stands on second base. That pitch from Osterlow in for a strike. Right at the belt. First pitch strike to all three batters here in the opening inning. One down here in the bottom of the first. Osterlow. In the circle, comes Plateward. That one on the inner half of the plate for a strike. Runs the count 0-2 quickly to the Cavalier first baseman. Nine RBIs on the season for Rachel. Osterlo looking for her second consecutive punch out. Gets it. So after giving up the lead off double to Madison Wendell, Osterloh strikes out Claire Steinke and Rachel Schroyer and brings up Avery Kanapke now. Center, center fielder in the left-handed box, hitting 220 on the year. It's the first pitch in for a strike. Got that outer half of the plate. Wendell still on second base after the leadoff double. As Cavaliers try to bring her around to get a number on that least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Pitch missed down and out of the zone. Four ball. That pitch swung out and missed. Osterloh. Gets it right past Kanapke. Ball tailed away a little bit from the left-handed hitter. A left-hander awaits the one-two. That pitch up and out of the zone at the eyes. He evens the count at two apiece. Luke Nago calling strikes and balls behind the plate today. It's John Derry Berry, our base umpire today. Osterloh, swing and a miss, strikes out three in a row after giving up the leadoff double. And we'll go to the top half of the second scoreless here on WOSN.
Today's School Road brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Four, five, six hitters coming up for Minster here in the top of the second. Michaela Hoskins, the first baseman, leading off for the Wildcats. A 476 hitter. Two home runs and a whopping 31 RBIs this season. For number 15, she watches the first pitch in for a strike at the knees. We've seen both pitchers dialed in on the first pitch. Garrett trying to get ahead of the count. They've done very well in that respect as we're here at the top of the second. You don't want to issue any free passes today. Don't want to get behind in counts. As there's a chopper, a tough play at second base. That takes a tough hop, tough hop off of Libby Grisha. And Michaela Hoskins is on board with the first base hit today for the Minster Wildcats. That was a shot. In fact, she that took that off the arm, and we're going to have to take a minute and take a look at that. Check her out just a second. That's just a hard hit ball to second base as the Wildcats get the laid-off runner aboard. And Anna Oldegas, catcher today, 348 hitter. 19 RBIs to her credit so far this year with four home runs. So Wendell steps back in the circle. That pitch missed. Cavaliers playing pretty deep in the outfield. Center fielder Avery Kanapke in the shade of those trees out in center well, it's, field. It's warm out. Maybe she wants to get is, in the shade. It is, <laughs> it is a warm early May day as that pitch missed as well. Runs a count to 2-0. I, I announced a game last uh, Thursday night where I rode home with my seat warmers on because I was so cold from sitting in the shade. And today, it's about the polar opposite yeah. of that one. I, th I thought about coming down with my air conditioning on. <laughs> Swing and drive over the screen behind home plate. As Oldius offers it the first pitch she thought was tasty from Wendell. 2-1 count here in the top of the second. Wildcats with a runner on first. Nobody down. And the number five hitter, Hannah Olde, gets to play. Wendell bounces that one. Runs the count to 3-1. Done a nice job locating the fastball. Off-speed stuff. Haven't got it over the heart of the plate just yet. Wendell comes plateward. A hardy cut from Oligus. Runs the count full at 3 2. You talked about that just a second ago. Garrett overpowered him with the fastball right there. Now 3 2. See what she comes with here on the payoff pitch. Foul back to the screen as Oligus hangs tough on the fastball. Pitcher doesn't steal a lot of bases, Garrett. They have a lot of power in their lineup and a lot of high averages, so they don't run a lot on the base pads. Oldest well, first base has not stolen a base this year. The 3 2 one more time. Skied high in the infield. Taking a step back is Tori Timmerman. She'll make the catch for the first put out here in the, first, in the second inning. One out in the inning, now batting, number six. Minster, Emma the high averages keep on coming to the plate. Mm -hmm. Emma Lynn, the right fielder, 380 on the season. She's got four home runs to her credit as the third baseman. Tori Timmerman takes a step in, wanting to see if maybe Minster puts a bunt on here as Lynn watches the first pitch in from Wendell for a strike. With both pitchers being so successful in the season, you might see some putting a play on in yeah. this particular situation. It's so many putouts from these two that it's set them down. There's a drive over the shortstop's head. As Hoskins will trot to second base. Runners on first and second with one down. Here in the top half of the second inning, on the base knock from Lynn. Just fisted it over the shortstop's head. The, the grass is high and thick, Garrett. It didn't get out to the center fielder very quickly. That might nope. be something we watch for later on in the game and it might give somebody an opportunity to score from second base, perhaps. Haley Alvarez to the plate. 
you now, Social. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, I just make sure we're. My mistake. Batter is Haley Albers. All right, nine. Here we go, nine. Albers, a 269 hitter. Wearing number nine for the Wildcats. A couple of home runs on the season. We got a runner in scoring position. As Wendt will come play. We're to the first pitch. Struck back to second base. They'll take the easy out at first. As Grishup just chucks it to first on the fielder's choice. But now two runners in scoring position for the Wildcats. Brink, that brings up the pitcher, Brooklyn Osterlo. That other high average hitter, 323 in the eighth spot for the Mainster Wildcats. Two down. Osterlo awaits the pitch from her counterpart. That's a drive into left center field. And it's past the left fielder. Two runs will score. Osterloh will stop at second base on the stand-up two RBI double. And the Minster Wildcats are on at least famous recipe chicken scoreboard first. Put it in the gap out there just to the left of the 205 sign. That double will drive in a pair. So Osterloh adds to her, her RBI total. And that brings up Elena Pranger, the number nine hitter, and the six hitter number one. here number one. in. Yes, Wendell will step back in the circle. Got a runner at uh, second base, Garrett. The number one, Trago, is running at second base. That pitch up and out of the zone is. Trago, the courtesy runner from Brooklyn Osterlo, the pitcher. Pranger hit with just a 236 average on the season, but has 12 RBIs in the number nine spot. Well, I know looking to get out of the top of the second inning here with just those two runs surrendered. There's a miscommunication, I think, from the dugout to Wendell. She shook off a couple of times, looked confused just a little bit. And now we'll step back on the rubber. Fastball missed inside. As Trago takes a big secondary lead, almost daring the Cavaliers to throw down to try to get her. Big out here, the number nine hitter. Don't want to turn the lineup over with a couple of base runners on, already down 2-0. That pitch swung on and missed. Runs count 2 1. Trego standing at second base as the pinch runner. Courtesy runner, I should say. As Wendell comes playward. Missed wide. It's a 3 1 count here. Missed wide. Ball was outside. Trying to get a number nine hole hitter to swing at something that's off the plate. Now you got to come in if you're Madison Wendell. The 3-1. In for a strike. Runs the count full of 3-2. Was Elena Pranger. Pranger, I beg your pardon. The left fielder for the Wildcats, a 236 hitter. Has a runner at second base. With two down. Wendell comes playward. Driven into center field. Right at Ooh. Avery Kanapke. And she'll make the grab to end. The visitors half of the second inning will go to the home side. Minster gets on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Two to nothing, Wildcats lead here on WOSN. The five, six, seven hitters coming to the point for Coldwater in the home half of the second inning here as Tory Timmerman will lead off. Playing third base today for the Cavaliers is Osterlo uncorks one back to the screen. Timmerman a 194 hitter, a couple of RBIs on the season for the Cavaliers. Brooklyn Osterlo. Fires his strike. Evens a count of one apiece. Osterlo helping her own cause in the top half of the second inning with a two RBI stand-up double. So that one's driven right to the third baseman. Addison Inskeep fires across the diamond for the putout. 
A nice play by Inskeep. That was. The ball was, was, right down yeah, to it was low. It was kind of skimming the dirt. She made a good pick up and a strong throw across the field. That brings Haley Stow to the plate. She watches that first pitch up and out of the zone. Playing shortstop today. Looking to improve upon that average on the season. Ground ball out, breaks a run of three consecutive strikeouts. Yes, sir. There's a swing and a miss. Hesitated, wasn't sure whether she wanted to pull the trigger or not. By the time she did, the ball was in the catcher's glove. One one count here with one down. In the bottom of the second. Osterlo missed up and out of the zone with that one. Wildcats, winners of 20 in a row. 23 and 1 on the season, coming off a 15 to 4 win over New Bremen. Is that pitch? Missed as well. It's a 3 1 count now. Coldwater dropped a 7 4 decision to Lincoln View last night. As there's one over the right fielder's head at the base of the wall. Haley Stow into second base with a slide in, slide in double. And she'll pop back up with a smile on her face after driving that one to the right field wall. Just one hop the wall out there for the Lady Cavaliers softball side. Good play by the right fielder, Emma Lynn, to get it back in. Almost got him at second base. So one down, and Ava Dahl has three RBIs on the season, but look to make that four here with a base knock. Where number 21, Dahl playing the left field for the Cavaliers. 11 and nine on the season. And the number four seed in the Division three district at Bath is Osterlo. That one gets past the catcher. Stow slides into third. And with a one down, Stow takes third on the pass ball. And now Dahl with a runner. On third, there's a hardy cut at the second offering from Osterlo. Here at the backstop here at Coldwater is very close to the plate, so if the ball yeah. gets past the catcher, it'll take some speed to get in from third base. One down here in the bottom of the second. The 0-2 count to the number seven hitter. Swing and a miss, got her up high. And Dahl goes down on strikes. Cavaliers are hacking at it, Garrett. The, the all four strikeouts have been by the swinging variety. Yes, that's not afraid to take the cuts, if, and it's coming in pretty hard too. So if you get some bat, you get some wood on it, it's going to go a long way. As there's a pitch in, as Riley Hill swings at it for a strike. Runner on third, Osterlo comes playward. Missed inside. The 1-1 one, one from Osterlo. Swing and a miss from Eels. Eos has two RBIs on the season. Would really like to pick one up here and cut this lead in half. Osterlo trying to set her down and get out of the inning. Missed well out of the zone. Didn't chase the rise ball. Got the old deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the second. Two nothing score for Minster on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Riley Eels. Swing and a miss. And. Back-to-back -back K's retires the Cavaliers 
after the double from Haley Stow. They go down in order. Back-to-back -back strikeouts recorded by Brooklyn Osterloh. It'll go to the top of the third. Wildcats with a 2-0 advantage here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. It's 2-0 Minster on that Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, and the Wildcats would like to add to it. At the top of the order here at the top of the third, Reese Albers coming to the plate. She'll take a half-hearted swing at the first pitch she sees on the change up from Wendell. Took the first pitch that she saw in a game and whacked it to the second baseman. Yes, sir. Albers made a nice play on that. I mean, Crescent made a nice play on that. Albers tried to lay down the bunt off the screen behind home plate. So two strikes now on the leadoff hitter. 312 batting average on the season. Ooh, just, just missed, missed yeah. the outside corner. Took just some, missed. Took some plate discipline to not go after that one with a 0-2 count. That one driven right back to Grisham. She'll make the toss over, and Albers has retired for the second time tonight on the 4-3 put out. And Ryland Trago will come back to the plate. Struck out her first time up, swinging. Center fielder, a 4-27 hitter for the Wildcats in that two-hole. Scored 32 runs on the season. There are probably teams in the area that haven't scored 32 <laughs> runs this season. And Trago's got 32 of her own as she watches the first pitch in for a strike. Gotten pretty good weather so far this year. Minster's got 24 games in already. Yeah, they know, do. Yeah. Coldwater's got 20 games in. We've had the tournament draw. We can give you those matchups a little bit later on. You mentioned about going to Bath to the district. That pitches a strike. An 0 2 count now. Minster, unsurprisingly, the number one seed in Division IV Wapak District. 23 and 1 generally will get you a number one seed. Is the 0 2 from Wendell. Missed up and out of the zone as Trago watched it. Runs the count to 1-2, looking to avoid her second strikeout of the day. Minster will play the winner of Perry and Spencerville. Those two teams will play on the 6th of May, and that game with Minster then will be at on the 9th, 5 o'clock at Minster, before moving on to the districts at Wapak. Back-to-back -back balls from Wendell, runs the count to 2-2. Wildcats, the number one ranked team in the state in Division Four. Wendell, the 2-2. Swinging and a miss. Got Trago for the second time today on the swinging strikeout. So the third inning. Looking just like the first in the scorebook. A 4-3 and a K for Madison, Madison uh, Wendell. Wendell had 206 strikeouts coming into today. And she's got just two, but both of them are Ryland Trago. And Al Addison Inski, the vaunted hitter in that Minster, in the heart, one of the vaunted hitters really in that heart of that Minster lineup. 500 hitter. Although she's probably down to 498 <laughs> after grounding out to short in the first inning. And that pitch at the letters for a ball. Got to be careful with a hitter like Addison Inski. 10 home runs on the season, 47 RBIs. We talked about Trago scoring 32 runs. When the batter behind you has 47 <laughs> RBIs, doesn't take much math to put that together. Is that one's in for a strike? Well, the other people are doing their job, too, because Addison has 41 runs she scored. Now, 10 of those because she knocked herself <laughs> right, in. 10 of but them, she's still, trotting around the bases. Still 31 of them come from her teammates as well. A 1-1. Swing and a miss, makes it 1-2 with two down here in the top of the third. Wildcats with a 2-0 lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Maddox and Wendell 
trying to get out of the inning, avoiding getting in to keep on base. That one to first base. It's caught in the air. Well, they'll say stepped on the bag yeah. as Rachel Schroyer makes the put out herself to retire the side here in the top of the third. We will go to the bottom half when we return here on WOSM. Bottom of the third inning, 2 nothing. Minster with the advantage over Coldwater Cavaliers. Bring the 9, 1, and 2 hitters to the plate. As Libby Grisha, 262 hitter, playing second base today. It's been kind of the hot middle for <laughs> Libby Grisha in the field today. She's fielded a couple of balls for Coldwater. She takes a cut at the first pitch she sees today. In for a strike from Brooklyn Ostrello. 262 hitter. This is one of those where you want your bottom of the order person to be an on-base person. Set the order for the, the top of the order coming up. That one dribbling off the plate, especially when the top of your order looks yeah. like Madison Wendell, Claire Steinke, and Rachel Schroyer. He'd yep. like to set that table. So that after the foul tip, it's an 0-2 count. Two green ship. One home run, two RBIs on a year. Out of that nine hole. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. And that's the sixth strikeout tally today by Brooklyn Osterlo. And as she did earlier, three consecutive. Two to end the second inning, and then this one to start hitting number three. Here's Wendell back. Wendell, leadoff double back at the first. Out to... Right field. You can't get much deeper if you're the right fielder. No. <laughs> Emma Lind is way back here. There is not a warning track out there, I don't believe, but if there was, she'd be standing about the middle of it. She's not going to let that ball get over her head one more time. Seven home runs, 15 RBIs from her leadoff position. That one skied into shallow center field coming on. Is Trago to make the catch. And Wendell flies out for the second out. Well, we talked about what Minster does in the tournament. The Coldwater Cavaliers will play Allen East. That will be on uh, the 7th of May. That's at Coldwater at 5 o'clock. And then the winner will move to the sectional finals where they will play the number two seeded Paulding Panthers. That's on the 10th at 5. And that move on to that Bath District on the 16th, uh, excuse me, on the 14th and 16th. Claire Steinke watches the first pitch in for a strike. And like in many sports, the, the max schedule will prepare you for a, a oh, tournament run. That one fouled back to the screen. First pitch strike to all three batters in this inning. And in fact, I think just one batter, the two batters today have not had a first pitch strike. Which coincides, Coldwater is six strikeouts. They're all swinging there, not they afraid are. to yeah. swing the bat. That one missed out wide. Claire Steinke's dad, Mark, my junior high science teacher back in the day. Is that right? Eddie, I'm sure hearing that will make him feel like an old man. <laughs> When I was 12 years old, he was my teacher. Now I'm 34. Osterlo, that one's fouled back by Steinke. Great teacher, high school junior high football coach. Not sure I can remember 34. <laughs> <laughs> Who was president when you were 34 years old? Oh, let me think. Okay. Washington uh, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe. Yeah, Adams, no, 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 no. The 2-2 two, two to Steinke. Fouled off the plate. I do know that Harry Truman was president when I was born. That's not a good thing. <laughs> so, I mean, that would put you in what? That, that's Reagan. Is Reagan president when you're 34? Uh, let me see. Yeah, that would be right. Steinke gets that one that? up the middle. 
on the old excuse me swing gets the base knock. I think she was just a really nice swing. She was fooled by the pitch and then got enough bat on it to get it up the middle and secure the third hit of the game for her team. That brings up Schroer. Was the middle of those three consecutive strikeouts to end the first inning. When Ronald Reagan came to Lima in 1984, my mother sang the national anthem. Really? Yes, that's a fact. That one back up the middle, corralled and stepped on the bag by Reese Albers. And that will retire the Cavaliers in the home half of the third. Get a base runner on, can't bring her over at all. And in as Schroyer goes down, six unassisted in the scorebook. We'll go to the home half here in the third, or we'll go to the top of the fourth, I beg your pardon. Here on WOSM. Four, five, and six hitters do up for Minster here in the top half of the fourth inning. Wildcats holding a 2 0 lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. I'm Garrett C. Wright. You went alongside Mark Shine. This is where the damage occurred for Minster. Went uh, down in order in the opening inning, and then they opened up the second inning, put two on the board. Hoskins got the lead off single back in the second inning, came around to score. As did Emma Lynn on the two RBI double from Brooklyn Osterloh, helping her own cause. Madison Wendell looking to deliver the 1-0. That one fouled back to the screen. Evens account at one apiece. You know, Garrett, isn't this is a wonderful facility here at Cold Oh, Water. absolutely. I mean, you got the big park area, lots of ball diamonds, the swimming pools right here, the park. The baseball field, of course, has been re rejuvenated the last couple of years. This is just a wonderful part of the Cold Water community. That pitch in for a strike, one, two. And I, I will tell people, if you have nice facilities, that says a lot because they're yeah. hard, you, you got to put work into having yeah. a nice facility, whether it's a gym, whether it's a ball diamond, whether whatever the case may be, football stadium, track. If you have nice facilities, it's because everybody in the community is pulling in the same direction as that one stung down the third base line. Foul. Maybe somebody saw it on Wednesday night on our station. Todd Walker and I were at Kaleida on Tuesday oh, with yes. a game with Columbus Grove. And that new baseball, not new, rejuvenated <laughs> stadium that they have built there. It's that about is, the opposite of new, yeah, but it, it, is, it, it is refurbished. It is really neat, really neat place to see a game. Fantastic sight lines. Great old-timey feel as that pitch dribbled down to the first baseline. Great play made by Rachel Schroyer backing up, stepping on the bag herself. Of course, if you want to look at good facilities and great games, next Monday, WSN will be in the Defiance for the Defiance Wapak matchup, which will go a long way towards determining the Western Buckeye League championship and the facilities at Defiance. Top notch. Yes, sir. Football, basketball, baseball. A really nice place for us to telecast from, too. That first pitch into Hannah Oldegas in for a strike. Oldegas flew out to third base. Back in the second inning. The game takes place Monday night. We'll air uh, Tuesday on WOSN. And Defiance, one of those places you don't really have to worry about the weather too much. It looks it's a track meet weekend. We've got the oh, PCL yes. championships this weekend. On, uh, that will air on Saturday night. And we've got the Ada Invitational Saturday that will air on Sunday night on WOSN. So on track this weekend if you're into those kind of things. The 0-2 pitch to Oldius. Missed just wide. Go to a track meet, hang out on that little final curve, and I love to watch those young ladies and young men blow around the curve on the 200 meter. I was the 200 meter. I, I love there that. There they are. They are at a dead sprint when they come around the corner. They are moving. That is my favorite race. That one driven into left field. Coming on, making the grab is Ava Dole. And quickly two down. Nice play by Ava. Running in, ranging to the foul line here on the near side. Now Emma Lynn got a single. Came around to score from the number six spot for the Wildcats back in the second. Minster's the defending league champion in the MAC. They were 6-1, tied with Parkway a year ago. That one fouled 
back to the screen. Trying to win this one outright. In 2022, it was Coldwater that was 7-0. Oh. Minster was 6-1. And, one. and 2021, Minster was 6-1. and one. Of course, the COVID year in 2020, 18 and 19, Minster was 7-0. and oh. You add all that up, the last five years in this league, 32 and 3. Wow. Four championships, trying to get another one tonight. That one popped up to shallow right field. Could be trouble. And it drops on a line. Lynn will take off for second base. Tough field from right field. Couldn't pick it up out of the grass. And Emma Lynn's on for the second time today. Single to double for her today. She scored the last time. And those high averages keep on coming to the plate. That was just in no man's land. You really couldn't it place it much better than that. The second baseman, Gresham couldn't get to it. Eels couldn't get to it from right field. Wasn't hit hard enough for her to get to it. Two down. Runner on second base is the pitch to Haley Albers. In for a strike. Albers, 269. Hit her two home runs, two, 12 RBIs. Grounded out to second base. Back in the second inning. Wendell chopped to second. Play made by Libby Grieship to get the Cavaliers out of the inning unscathed. They'll go to the home half trailing 2-0 on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard here on WOSM. Hitters 4, 5, and 6 to the plink for the Coldwater Cavaliers here in the fourth inning. Avery Kanapke, the center fielder, will lead it off from the left-handed batter's box. Kanapke struck out to end the first inning, her first time up. Looking to get on base, set the table for the Cavaliers here in the home half of the fourth. Found that one back on the first pitch she sees here in the fourth. Moving quickly through this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup, Minster 6-0. and on the season and the conference, Coldwater 5-1 can stop the Wildcats from winning the conference outright with a victory here today. That pitch up and out of the zone. Even to count at one apiece. Coldwater will host the Strikeout Cancer Classic on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Here, we've got Fort Recovery, Marion Local, and Sylvania Southview on the docket for the somewhat all-day event. Sylvania South, you better go on the bus Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a trip. I think the first, first game starts at 11 o'clock in the morning. I can't imagine uh, what time uh, that bus leaves for Southview. The 2 1, swing and a miss. Evens a count at two apiece. Four Let's Kanaki. throw some props towards the Kenton Wildcats. How about Garrett? that? First a league championship in softball ever. They might end up in a tie with Defiance, depending on how the last part of the schedule goes. But. Uh, have not won a league championship in girls' sports in the Western Buckeye League since 1983. Is that correct? Yes, that, that uh, 1983. And the first ever softball championship. So congratulations to the Kenton Wildcats. I saw the picture of them uh, after their victory that clinched them a share and couldn't have been wider smiles on those faces. A swing and a miss for Kanapke goes down for the seventh strikeout. And all seven of them have been swinging strikeouts. Now, unfortunately for the Cavaliers, they've come in bunches of three. Yeah, they so have. <laughs> That's correct. Tori Timmerman would like to break that streak. As Brooklyn Osterloh now with seven Ks on the day. That pitch dove out of the zone that she swung at that time. It ended up, would have been ball four, but had committed to the swing. That's only the third first pitch ball of the game. Osterloh looking to rectify that here on the second pitch. Missed up and out of the zone, so a 2-0 count to Tory Timmerman, the third baseman. Grounded out to third on a hot shot back in the second inning to lead off that frame. That one driven right back to the third baseman. Has a strong throw across the diamond from Madison Inskeep. She has had a nice day over there. That's a tough spot to field. Yes, it is. Ball's on you in a hurry. She made another nice pickup and a very strong throw across the line. She, and she's played even with the bag. She's not, maybe the heels on the front of the bag, to tell you the truth, and handles those shots down the line really well. And Haley Stow, the shortstop. Just a junior is Addison. That pitch inside. 
Inskeep, the junior, playing third base for Minster. 500 hitter coming into today. 10 home runs, 47 RBIs. So she's got a senior season still to play to add some numbers. Those record books there at Minster. That pitch swung on and missed. You know, we ought to throw some props towards Rob Hemmelgarn, too. He will be the new commissioner of the MAC after this uh, school year comes to an end. A Minster bench boss taking over for Don Kemper. That one swung out and missed. Don Kemper been the MAC commissioner for, oh, I don't know, probably the last decade or so. Yeah. 14 years total. Apparently I'm older than I thought. That one driven into shallow right field just over the outstretched arms of Haley Albers. And Haley Stowell's on for the second time today. Second time we've seen a, a swing like that. We had one back in the, the last inning by Claire Steinke. You're just trying to protect the plate and she was able to flare it over the second baseman's head. Get a base runner on. Just in the perfect spot. But Stout two for two on today. Yeah, she struggled with her average on the season. Yeah. Gets one of the best, better pitchers around, and she's had a good day. Brooklyn Osterlow now facing Ava Dole. Ava Dole, I beg your pardon. Dole. A nice running catch back in the top half of the fourth inning. And a hit from Hannah Oldegas. Foul back that first offering. The 0-1. That one foul back to the screen. Haley Stow was on the run that time. A kind of hit and run type situation. She does have three stolen bases on the season for the Cavaliers. Trailing 2-0 here on the bottom of the fourth. That one swung on and missed to retire the Cavaliers here in the home half of the third. On the eighth strikeout compiled by Brooklyn Osterloh. We'll go to the top of the fifth. Two nothing. Minster with the advantage over Coldwater here on WOSN. Top of the fifth for the Minster Wildcats. Looking to expand upon that 2 nothing lead on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. There's a shot to shortstop. Haley Stow fires across the diamond for the out. That's a strong throw from Haley Stow to retire Brooklyn Osterlo. Ball was hit towards the third base side. She had to make a couple of slide steps to get to it and then make the play across the diamond. Here's Pranger's going to take a little time let her pitcher recover a little bit after legging it out there, trying to leg it out down the first baseline. But each pitcher's given up four hits, Garrett. The problem is three of them for Minster came in the second inning and played it two runs. That first pitch in for a strike. It's been kind of a bunches, bunches game for Minster. Their strikeouts have come in threes and twos. Mm -hmm. Their hits have come in scores of three of their four hits. Came back, as Mark said, in that second inning. That leads to the 2 nothing score. That one swung out and missed. Whereas the Cavaliers have one hit in each of the four innings and haven't been able to string them together to put the numbers on the board. Yep, one, one hit in every inning, one left on base in every inning. Wendell back in the circle, the 0-2. That one, check swing, did not go. You can tell Wendell pitches here an awful lot. There's a spot right behind yes. the, the rubber where her foot Fits perfectly <laughs> That's right. into the dirt. It's almost like a little good luck thing for her, is yeah, it? Just it's retreats to that little yeah. divot. Steps back to the circle. The 0-2 change up. Mm. Really good pitch that time. Had him lean and wanted to take a hack at it. That, that's a tough pitch to, yeah, hang, really is. to, to hang off of. It's at the knees. You can see it coming in. Runs a count to 1-2. One, one down here in the top of the fifth inning in this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup. That pitch in for a strike. As Wendell's third strikeout of the day. Gets Pranger for the second out of the frame. First time it's been a call to strike three by either pitcher today. That is correct. Got to 
get the backwards K on the scorebook instead of the forwards K. It's, it's been a rare one today. <laughs> it's been a backwards K. Back to Albers at the top of the order. Albers grounded out to second twice today. That one rolled to Wendell. She'll fire to Rachel Schroyer at first for the out. And the Wildcats retired in order here in the fifth inning. We'll go to the home half. Cavaliers looking to get on the scoreboard when we return it here on WOSM. Bottom of the fifth inning, Coldwater trailing 2-0, looking to do something about it with Riley Eagles at the eight hole. Right fielder struck out her first time up back in the second inning. Fouls off the offering from Brooklyn Osterlo on the first pitch of this fifth inning. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. That one fouled off again. I shared this with Todd Walker on Tuesday night at Kaleida. You know how you know I didn't write that because it doesn't say sweet tea. Because oh. Lee's sweet tea is special. I mean, the lemonade's fine. Uh, the lemonade's so good, I, I couldn't find out about sweet tea, to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can make tea sweet enough to make it palatable, as that one's in for the strikeout. Second time, Eels has been retired via the K. Nine of them? Nine of them. And I, I can't talk about Lee's too much on the broadcast, Mark, otherwise you'll hear a faint <laughs> Start talking about chicken strips and potato wedges, mac and cheese, extra biscuit. But <laughs> number nine hitter, Libby Greeship, fouls one back to the screen. Now, with your your duties with uh, Marquette, Michigan, and Northern Michigan, yep. have you found the places to eat in Marquette, there, Michigan? There is a somewhat similar Lee's. Uh, it's called the Yoop Coop. It's the Upper <laughs> Peninsula. Upper the yeah. Yoop Coop. Yoop Coop. Yoop Coop. Yeah. Uh, Yoop Coop's not bad. It's the 0 1 pitch. Swung on and missed on the change up 0 yeah. 2. Just completely fooled the ball was, as you said, a change up. It dropped out of the zone. When you can pull the string like that, yes. when you can bring it in with so much heat like Osterlo can and then take so much off of it, that's a tough pitch to lay off of. You can put it over the heart of the plate. Fouled that one back off the hands. Well, per what we talked about before the game, the two pitchers between them had told them, thrown a total of 23 base on balls on the season, and neither one has thrown one today. I, I think 2-0 has been 3-1. Yeah, <laughs> right. Maybe yeah, we've okay. had a couple full counts. but Both on the plate all day long. Timeout. Okay, time called. Here is Osterlo. It was just about to fire that pitch in on the 0-2 to Grisham. Wildcats tallied a pair of runs back in the second inning after a leadoff hit from Michaela Hoskins. Emma Lynn got a base knock to put runners on scoring position, and Brooklyn Osterloh in the circle helped her own cause with a two RBI double. Missed just wide on that one, looking for her tenth strikeout of the day. But again, around the plate, and again, some plate discipline not to go after that one when you're looking at an 0 2 count. Grisha, a 262 hitter, gets one pass Osterloh. Tough play at second base, and Albers makes the throw for the out. Nice play by that Haley was. Albers. I over thought at that was going to be an infield hit. I Garrett was right there was with near you. the second base bag. She had to go, plant a foot, make the throw. Good stretch over at first base by Hodgkins. Madison Wendell. And that brings up Madison Wendell with two down here in the bottom of the fifth. Which is where you want to be. You want Madison Wendell up without anybody on base. Osterlow. That one driven. Over the right fielder's head, off Ooh. the base of the wall. But unfortunately, stung it so hard, it's just going to be a single. That would be a fact. That was about four foot short of being out of here on a line. And instead, she just gets a long single off the wall. So Steinke comes up to the plate. Well, Wendell on first. Madison Wendell, two for three today. Fly out to the center fielder, her other at bat. Put a charge into it each she's, time. Exactly. She's, she has made solid contact against a good pitcher. Got a leadoff double back in the first inning. Now finds herself on first the, base. The thing with that one, Garrett, it didn't get up high enough for the wind to help yeah. it. <laughs> it's 
Steinke drills one to center field. Trago camps under it, makes the catch. And that will do it. Fifth consecutive inning, the Cavaliers get a base hit. Fifth consecutive inning, they leave them on the base pass. We'll go to the sixth. Two nothing Minster here after five on WOSN. Two to nothing to score. Minster, the lead over Coldwater. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. The Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. You know, you mentioned that. You read that thing and you get hungry. I go, I'm going to drive by three different Lee's <laughs> on the way home. <laughs> you got me thinking, Garrett. Well, you know, it's it's tough. It's just like that changeup. It's tough to lay off. <laughs> it's, it is, that's the good one, you, you, you got to drive past three of them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to hit any on the way home, and that's luckily, lucky for Lee's because they would have to turn the fryers back on if I'm coming through. There's a hot shot up the middle for the Minster Wildcats. As Ryland Trago on with a leadoff single. Struck her out a couple times, but not that time. Good solid ground ball up the middle. Lead off hitter on. Now Rob Hemelgar give the Minster Wildcats instructions on how they'd like to operate. Now Coldwater is going to get together and talk about how they want to defend this with the lead runner on and the number three hitter Addison Inskeep. A 500 hitter on the season. Now Garrett, the Minster will win their sixth league championship. Uh, whether it's outright if they win today or whether it's a shared situation, they will win their sixth today, and five of them have come since 2018. Rob Hemelgar did a nice job yep. with that Minster Wildcat program. Top of the sixth, nobody down. Here is Wendell. We'll step back in the circle. Nobody down. And Addison Inskeep watching that first pitch is Trago. Gets a big secondary lead. Well, she has the three stolen bases on the year. And then we talked about that they don't run a lot to the Mr. Wildcats, but she has three. Inskeep at the plate has 14 of them, and that's uh, by far the most of the club. There's a swing and a miss. And when you got the batting averages that Minster does. Yeah, well, don't, don't, have exactly. need, don't have a need to steal. It's when you can knock it out of the park and, and score nine and a half runs the way they do, their team batting average is 368. The 1-1. One, one. Inskeep shows bunt in for a strike. Now well, Wendell comes back with a 1-2 here. We'll see what she throws. Inskeep 0 for 2 all today. Grounded out to short. Ground at the first. That pitch just missed. Evens a count at two apiece. Wendell wanted it. Yeah, on the outside portion of the plate, but off the plate. Really a good pitch for a one and two. See if you can get him fishing a little bit. Maybe catch one off the end of the bat to the roll towards the first baseman or second baseman. That one up the middle. And LB runners on the corners. If the Cavaliers cut it off, they'll Allow Inskeep to go to second on the throw. Now two runners in scoring position for Minster here in the sixth. Yeah, missed the cutoff person and that let him go. First of all, first to third was going to happen with Trago and then let the, the hitter Inskeep get to second base. So they're in great position right here for the cleanup hitter. Michaela Hoskins. 31 RBIs on the season. Scored back in the second inning. That pitch in for a strike. Come on, Vic. Wendell wants the signs again as Michaela Hoskins steps out of the box. Hoskins, a 476 batter for Minster. That one chopped off the home plate. 0-2 the count now. This is one you'd like to throw a bit off the plate and hope she fishes for it, but you can't throw a wild pitch here. Yeah. Although that close backstop yeah, does really help. Got to keep those runners at bay. It will come back to the catcher in a hurry for that short distance. 
Wendell rocks and fires. That one just below the knees. You know, in baseball, you get the benefit of a ball that starts low, stays low. Yes. Softball, 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 softball you, yeah, you, you right. can't rule that pitch out just at the knees. The one, two. Popped it high in the air. In foul territory. Grabbed by Rachel Schroyer as Trago forced a throw to home. It was on line from Schroyer. With one out. No batting. And that brings Hannah Oldegas. Time for the backward F, Garrett. We talked about the get backward K oh, a little yes, while sir. ago. Foul a little out. meeting at the mound here. So Coldwater will talk, talk about two runners on, second and third, both in scoring position with one down. You're in the top half of the sixth inning. Really good base running move by Trego, though. Tag up, make an effort to, like you're going to yep. score, make, them, make a throw, and if it's offline, you get a chance to score. So good heads up base running from her. Yeah, and athletic enough that if it is a strong throw, you can get back to third with yep. no no worries about getting back there. A lot of times your first baseman in that area is kind of backing up anyway and got a chance to get a throw that's a bit offline. Home plate umpire Luke Noggle will make the slow mosey out to the circle, but Coldwater will break things up and get back to action here in the top of the sixth inning, it's a 2-0 lead for Minster. Wildcats, two runs back in the second inning after three of their hits came in that frame alone. Two hits here in the top of the sixth with a one down. And Hannah Oldegas, catcher, 348 hitter, coming to the plate. That change up in for a strike. Inner part of the plate. Down and around the knees, good pitch. Thinking fastball and wanted to get ahead in the count instead to give a nice changeup. Yeah, if you can throw that over the plate for a strike, that's a, that's a good pitch to have in the arsenal. As Wendell will come plate with the 0 1. That one driven up the middle, back to center field. One run will score. Inskeep coming, she's up. And it's a 4 nothing lead for the Minster Wildcats. Solid base hit up the middle for two RBIs. Pitch was up a little bit about Bell Tie, and she got a hold of that one. Center fielder was playing deep, as we've talked about, with the power that you see in the Minster lineup. Not a chance to cut it off and make a play at the plate. They were able to hold uh, Old Aziz to first base, however. So that is the second two RBI hit today for Minster. Yes, Brooklyn Osterlo had the first one back in the second inning. Still just one down as Emma Lynn comes to the plate. As Minster's going to get a pinch runner here. Take a look and see. Yes. Number 27 is Bergman. Hey, yep. Elena Bergman stands at first base. Courtesy running for Olius, who's the catcher for Minster, as Lynn watches that pitch in for a strike. Had a double on a bloop single. Well, it can't be a double on a bloop single. A double on a, a bloop to shallow right field on the perfect spot. Her last time up in the fourth inning. Elena Bergman. Yeah, Elena. Fouled off on the offering to Lynn. The 0 2. Driven to right field. Off the wall as Bergman stands at second base. Had to yeah. tag up there. Oh, that's a shot off the wall. Over the head of the right fielder out there, Eels. Because she had to hold up, she was going to get caught. And she was not able to go first to third. Oldest just was not. 
Now Haley Albers comes to the plate. Runners at first and second. First pitch right down the heart of the plate for a strike from Wendell. See, Albers has that left foot cocked toward the side of the batter's box that forces her to step into the ball. She takes a stance here. That pitch, a little low. Evens the count at one apiece. Still just one down here in the top of the sixth. Albers has 12 RBI on the season. Two of them coming on the go for ball. That pitch in the dirt. Bergman at second. Lynn at first for the Wildcats with a 4-0 lead here on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Wendell, the 2-1. Driven back into right field. Bergman's got the wheel and Schill coming around to score. It's a 5 0 lead for the Minster Wildcats. Take the ball where it's pitched and drill it into the right field area. And Owens just had her wheels on that time. And they're blowing this one open. Runners on the corners. Still one out. Minster had four hits coming into the inning. Five hits here in the sixth alone. That pitch up and out of the zone. Get a runner. Yep, looks like Minster going to go to the bench. See if we can't get a pinch runner here. Okay, it's Haley Albers, the second baseman, will be subbed for. Looks like number 32, and that is Lauren Tyler, a sophomore. So she'll step on first base. Yeah, Lauren Tyler. Yeah, we've had some games this year, Garrett. You're going to be pretty cold sitting on that bench over there. It's tough to commit a pitch run, but uh, not today. <laughs> you're, 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 you're ready to you go. Are, yeah, you don't need to stretch out, really, or get the blood flowing. 84 degrees on the game time temp. And I don't know that there's a softball player who would say no to 84 game time temp the first week of May as that pitch in. It'll swipe out at second base, but the run trots yep. home to score. So Tyler's retired on the caught stealing. And Lynn comes around to score. So two down now. Here at the top of the sixth in a six nothing game. As that one fouled back to the screen on the first offering to Brooklyn Osterloh. Had the two RBI double. Back in the second, it got the Wildcats on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard first. Between that and what she's done on the mound today, quite an opportunity for Brooklyn Osterloh today. Wendell in the circle. The 0-2 swung on and missed from Osterloh. Fourth strikeout of the day tallied by Madison Wendell. And we'll go to the home half of the sixth. Minster opens it up. A 6-0 lead now for the Wildcats after five and a half here on WOSN. Bottom of the sixth inning, Rachel Schroyer, the number three hitter, will lead off for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Looking to get some runs back on the league's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Trailing six nothing as she'll pop that one up and out of play. Cavaliers not been afraid to swing the bat here today. They have not. They struck out nine times, but all of them have been about a swinging variety. They come out there taking their shots at it. And Brooklyn Osterloh's got a lot of first pitch strikes, but that is a fact. That pitch up and out of the zone. It hasn't been really that Coldwater's chased many first pitch strikes. It's just been. This is the 21st hitter she has faced today, and 17 of them have gotten a first pitch strike. Wow. It's a percentage I think most softball coaches would take. Yeah, Schroyer swings at that one. Makes the count one, two. 
Actually, I was impressed I could add nine, nine, and three. It <laughs> <laughs> comes somewhat Figure close. Get, get it right. <laughs> the one, two. Skied in the infield. Albers will camp out under it at second base and make the catch. So they have four in the scorebook. It's been a really well played game, Garrett. We've not had an error by either team today. And now we can look for the WSN Mike the, the, the and Jinx. And one will pop up here pretty quickly, but it's been a well played game. Osterlow now facing Avery Kanapke, center fielder. Set down on strikes twice so far today. And there's the fifth one. There's the rare first pitch ball. That one fouled off. Evens count at one apiece. Six nothing Minster here in the sixth inning. One down in the home half. Yes, Brooklyn Osterlo leaves that one up out of the zone. Sawyer Goodwin, the uh, athletic director here at Coldwater and before the game, thinking, well, I'll talk to Eric. Nope, baseball game here tonight, softball game, and typical AD, he's on the move everywhere. Track meet over at the football That's correct. stadium. Yeah. So, There's a shot right oh. at the shortstop through the glove of Reese Albers. And uh, Avery Kanapke is on for the first time today. Well, what'd you call I that, Garrett? Just, I, I just, here I, we go. I went to, went to put my pencil yeah. to the scorebook, and I look over at Mark. I think... <laughs> I think that's an E6. That's what the official scorekeeper just said. My, I just the Mike Shep strikes again. Sorry, Mike. It's one of those. It's one of those that you, the ball almost catches you more than you catch it. It's just on top of Reese Albers quickly. It was there in a hurry, but it was right in the glove and couldn't squeeze it. As that first offering to Tory Timmerman fouled off. So Cavaliers looking to reverse the previous five innings to get in a runner aboard and a goose egg on the scoreboard. Would like to change that here in the home half of the sixth as that one nearly got Timmerman. Evens a count of one apiece. One down in the sixth. A lot of orange and black in the stadium today, Garrett. <laughs> awful, <laughs> awful around. lot. <laughs> That pitch in for a strike pass yeah. ball. Yes. Will lead to Kanapke taking second. Just off the glove on the inside part of the plate. We have a little meeting at the mound. Wildcats just taking a second to regroup here. Osterloh, nine strikeouts on the day thus far, all of them via the swinging variety. Six to nothing to score. Wildcats scored two back in the second and then four in the sixth to bust it open here in this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup. Wildcats looking to take home the outright Midwest Athletic Conference softball championship with a victory here tonight. They're six and oh, Coldwater five and one. Parkway is five and one as well. Parkway is 15 and three on the season. Of course, the Parkway's loss this year came to Minster. Wildcats ready to complete the inning here. A one-two count up and out of the zone. Evens it at two apiece. One down in this sixth inning. The two-two from Osterloh. Fouled back to the screen, fouled over the screen actually. And out of play is Tory Timmerman. Grounded out to third base twice today. So Addison Innskeep on high alert down here at the hot corner. As Hannah Oldegas crouches back down behind the plate to receive the 2-2 pitch. As Osterlo comes plateward. That one fouled off the third base line here. He's staying alive. Wildcats looking to win their 21st in a row after dropping an early season contest to Lincolnview. 
20 victories in a row. 2-2. Two -two. Osterloh. That one in the dirt. Runs the count full to 3-2. Tried to get him fished. That, that change up on the outside part of the plate that just kind of dies when it gets to the catcher. Good hitting by Timmerman. That's the first free that's pass correct. issued by Osterloh yeah. today. And she taps her chest to Oldegas and tells her that's my bad. I let that one uncork. And the first free pass now puts two runners on scoring. Two runners on base, I should say. By either team. It's first uh, yes. walk by either pitcher today. Troll has been at a premium. This. We talked about been a well-played game. No errors, yep. no walks. Last two, the last two hitters, yeah. an error and a walk. Style steps in. Been on twice today. That pitch in for a strike. Runners in scoring position for Haley Stow, the freshman. Has one RBI on the season. Would love to change that here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Trailing 6 nothing. There's a hardy cut from Stow. Runs the count to 0-2 on the first two offerings from Osterloh. Swing and a miss, and that's the 10th K recorded by Osterloh. Went after a pitch that was high and out of the zone, but it's got so much uh, movement, so much activity to it, you can't take a pitch, and she went up after it and couldn't get it. After going two for two, double to single, records a strikeout that time. And first pitch, take off her third, slide in time is... Kanapke, and now runners on the corners for the Cavs. So Kanapke reached on the error and now on third base after a pair of pass balls. The 1 0 from Osterloh. Ava Dole. Dahl. That one fouled up and out of play behind the first base dugout. Two down here in the sixth inning. Kid's a tennis player. He would have gone and got that one. <laughs> the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss from Dahl. Two down. Runners on the corners for the Cavaliers. Looking for a strikeout to keep the shutout intact. Osterloh gets her. The 11th swinging strikeout of the day. Cuts off the Cavaliers' opportunity in the bottom of the sixth. We'll go to the top half of the seventh. Wildcats looking to extend that lead when we return here on WOSN. The number nine hitter, Elena Pranger, will lead off for Minster here in the top half of the seventh inning. Wildcats with a 6 nothing advantage over Coldwater. Cavaliers will have something to say about that in the home half. But Pranger, 0 for 2 on the day. Struck out looking back in the fifth inning. Fouls out, one off the plate. A 236 hitter. Pranger with 12 RBIs coming into today. as Madison Wendell steps back in the circle. Now at 210 strikeouts on the season. After recording four today, that one in a tough spot into shallow left field. And Pranger's on for the first time with a base knock. Just muscled it out there. Got it on the end of the bat, but had just enough strength to muscle it over the infielder. And get that leadoff hitter on. And Minster. Turns the top of the lineup back over. Is that the 10th hit, Garrett? I'm looking through my lineup here. That Four. is, yes, that is 10. Yep. Five of them coming back at the sixth yeah, inning. Right. Bunched them together. As Albert shows bunt, pulls it back in time. Maybe didn't get it back in time. 
Uh, I thought it was a ball. Let's see I, what the, the scoreboard okay, the scoreboard, put up scoreboard, strike. Yep, so. Oh, they changed it. Albers, Trago, Inskeep, Hoskins, the top four hitters for Minster. And now the bunt on. Albers got contact on it, put it into her own dugout, however. They even count it one apiece. Albers, a 312 hitter, or maybe a 362 hitter. My writing might be just that bad. I can't tell the difference between a well, six I think and a it's one. 362. 362 hitter. There you go. Trago, 427. It's Inskeep, 500. Hoskins, 476. That's a lot of high numbers. For the Minster Wildcats, here with one runner on and nobody down to the seventh. Struggled a bit today. Stabbed at it, yep. missed it. Shakes her head in disgust. Albers 0 for 3 on the day. Grounded out twice to Libby Greaship at second and once to Madison Wendell in the circle. As she'll get her fourth, fifth strikeout of the day of Albers. Nearly got the runner down at first base as Pranger is straying pretty far from the back. Yeah, a little snap throw down there and got back in time. Trago to step in. Trago playing center field today. Got a base knock back in the sixth inning. Let off the scoring in that inning. At first pitch out of the zone. Trago struck out twice in the first and third. Two of Wendell's five Ks. Coldwater's won five MAC championships in softball. That pitch in for a strike, even as a count of one apiece. Both of them with tied with Versailles with five, although this will move with to six today. Trailing Parkway with 14 league championships. Wendell on the oh. changeup. A beautiful Wonderful pitch. Wonderful pitch. Yes, it was. Had him fooled completely. A fool a 427 hitter like that. You've thrown quite a pitch. Yeah, and then, <laughs> Trago, to her credit, uh, kind of shook her head like uh, there's just not much I can, yeah. I can do there, coach. That's a that's a beach ball, feels like coming in. And there's a, and it comes another the swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back K's recorded by Madison Wendell. As give her credit here in the seventh inning, she hasn't lost a, any zip on that fastball whatsoever. It keeps one for three today. What's bad, Garrett? You got to go two for four to keep your average from dropping. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a tough spot to be <laughs> in, is. you know? The pressure, you got to. It's 500 on the year. Garrett's giving you numbers all day. 40 runs, runs scored, 47 RBIs, 10 home runs. It's um, the numbers are gaudy enough that when you look at them, you check. Is this is this correct? Exactly. Is this, yeah, that's correct. Did Max Preps mess this up, or is this or is this the truth? No, it's the truth. 10 home runs, 47 RBIs. Yep. I made sure I was in the right column. You know, we'll go all the way back to <laughs> yeah. the top of the right. page. Is this the right column? It was. And ten doubles is a pretty nice season. That's ten home runs. Yeah. Is having a good year. Inskeep awaits the 0 1. That one, Anthony Ains. Big Pr lead for Pranger. I was just going to say Pranger. Yep. Dancing off that bag. Home plate umpire, Luke Noggle. First base umpire, base umpire, John Derryberry. Watching the runners as Anskeep fouls that one up over the screen. Just powered the ball in there. She couldn't get her bat around on it with enough authority. And ball goes foul. A hot day today. It's good to see that Madison Wendell still got some juice in the tank. Yet. Yes, yes, sir. Six strikeouts for Wendell, looking for number seven. Ainskeep had to hold off on it. Skies at the second base where it's gloved by Libby Greeship. And the Cavaliers will make their last stand here in the bottom of the seventh when we return 6 nothing Minster on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. 
home style happens here. 6-0 on that least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Bottom of the seventh, last chance for Coldwater. Minster looks to win the outright Midwest Athletic Conference Championship. 8 9 one hitters for Coldwater here in the bottom of the seventh. Riley Eels in the box. Watches that pitch in for a ball. In the dirt from Osterlo. Well, housekeeping duties here at home plate from Luke Noggle. 11 strikeouts tally today from Osterlo. One in every inning at least. Struck out three back in the first, two in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, one in the fifth, two in the sixth. As there's a strike, evens the count at one apiece. It's a leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the seventh. That pitch up and out of the zone. Coldwater playing in game number 21 today. Minster looking to win 21 in a row yeah. today. 2-1. Swing and a miss from Riley Eels. I want to thank our two camera people today, Abby Beck, Megan Sherrick, here working on their suntan. It's a great day to do it. Yes, it is. The 2-2 from Osterlo. That pitch out of the zone, runs the count full. Cavaliers look to get that leadoff hitter aboard. Tried to get him to chase that high rise ball. Laid off of it. Did Eels. Coldwater, I believe, has only got the leadoff runner on once today, back in the first inning. That pitch in for a strike, the 12th K for Osterlo, the backwards variety. And Libby Greeship comes to the plate. It's been a tale of two big innings today, Garrett. Second yes, sir. in the sixth. Big innings today for Minster Wildcats. Other than that, it's been a dead even game. Minster's got 10 hits on the day, eight of them come in those two innings as the first pitch from Greeship in for a strike. Osterlo working on a five hit shutout. And to Minster's credit at the plate, earned every one of them. No free passes issued. No. Nope. Coldwater hasn't committed an error. Yep, all the runs were earned. Against Madison Wendell, one of the really good pitchers around. Osterlo runs a count to 0-2 on the hardy chop from Greeship. 262 hitter. 0 for 2 on the day, however. One of the 12 strikeouts for Osterlo. Also grounded out to second during the fifth inning. As Greeship awaits the 0-2. That one's in at four back-to-back. -back. Strikeouts looking. Make it 13 Ks for Osterlo. Just froze him that time. After being so aggressive at the plate, the Minster's call had two consecutive called third strikes. Five of the seven innings tonight for Osterlo, double or at least two or more strikeouts. As the Midwest Athletic Conference trophy just left the press box. That pitch in for a ball is Madison Wendell. He has hit the ball about as hard as anyone all day. Mm. She got, she's two for three, a double, a single, and flow, flew out to center field. She's put the ball deep in the green each time she's been to the plate. Six nothing score, Osterlo versus Wendell. That pitch missed inside. She about put a hole in that Lady Cavalier softball sign out there the last <laughs> time up. Out in right field. Put a couple out there off the base of the wall today. The 2-0. That one driven back up the middle, out of the reach of Reese Alvers. And for the third time today, Madison Wendell's aboard. She will have three of the six hits of the game for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Yeah, that brings up Claire Steinke, senior catcher. Five home runs and 16 RBIs to her credit this season. And for the third time today, she'll come to the plate with Madison Wendell on base. Bad pitch in for a strike. Nice off-speed pitch to start her out. That one 
well struck. Down the third base line, nearly caught in left field by Elena Pranger. That was a long run for her. Had to look out for the fence where there's a gap in the fence there. Well, there's, a, there's a gap in the fence, Garrett, and then there's a line where the fence would be that you cannot run over and catch the ball, and she was kind of battling that whole situation. Trying to stay in the field of play and still make the catch. Instead, it goes to a ball and two like strike. Trying to catch a pass with one foot inbounds in football. You got to... Yep. So Steinke steps out of the box. Now the good part was that she wasn't going to run into that fence out there. Right. Like on a full, on a full, on a yeah, full speed exactly. sprint. So, tough chance she almost made a play on. Oster low. That pitch in the dirt. Evens a count at two apiece. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the seventh. Coldwater trailing 6 nothing. Madison Wendell at first base. Claire Steinke. Well hitting catcher. At the dish for the Cavaliers. Osterlow. That one skied into left field. Coming on is Pranger. She'll make the grab. And the Minster Wildcats have won the outright Midwest Athletic Conference title. Yeah, congratulations to them. They've got that 7-0 record again. That'll make them 33-3 over the last... Six years. Let me re-add that, Garrett. How about 39 and three over the last three years in this conference? And as good as this conference is in ladies' athletics, that's quite an accomplishment. And again, another trophy for the Minster Wildcats. The score on the Lee Sanders Recipe Chicken scoreboard: six nothing for Minster. Brooklyn Osterlow goes the distance today. Gives up six hits, five of them or three of them, I beg your pardon, to Madison Wendell. And she struck out, what is that, three, six, nine, 13? 13, 13 strikeouts yep. today. She faced the 29 batters, Garrett. 29 batters in the game, and 13 of them were caged. So a really nice effort for her today. So the Minster Wildcats will take home the gold trophy by themselves. They win today six to nothing, and they'll hoist the trophy down the first baseline in front of their faithful and have made the short trip to cold water. Minster, winners of 21 in a row now, now 24 and 1 on the season, and the number one seed in the Division IV Wapak District. So, a lot of excitement as the tournament run will get underway for Minster in the sectional finals next week. That will do it from us here at Coldwater. The Wildcats, your MAC champs, 7 0, undefeated in conference play. The final score, the final time on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Minster puts six on the board, two in the second, four in the sixth to bust it open and win the MAC title by a six to nothing score. For our fantastic WOSN crew at Mark Schott, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long. We'll catch you next time here on WOSN. <laughs>